Hello, everyone, and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Jack informs Ashley that a strategy is in place to bring Tucker down. Jack and Billy convinced Jill at the Abbots that their strategy was the greatest method to defeat a common adversary. They would be unstoppable, according to Jack, if they worked together. Jill claimed she knew just where to hit Tucker and where it would hurt the most, leaving him unable to recover. Jill mentioned a European fragrance brand that Ashley and Tucker had bought before they married. Billy stated that it was to be the foundation of their new corporation. Tucker had been funneling money into the company. Jack According demanded to, Jill, to know why he hadn't noticed that. Tucker, he claimed, had planned his entire scheme of meticulously controlled mayhem, and they'd played perfectly into his hands. Tucker, he said, didn't want to own Jabot. He wanted to destroy it from within. When Tucker observed them whirling out of control, Jack swore he would use Glissade to destroy them. He indicated that they needed to figure out how to stop him. Tucker, according to Jack, had a backup plan no matter what happened. He claimed that if Tucker was successful in bringing them down, his business would be on top, while they would be in splinters at the bottom, digging their way out. Even if Tucker failed, Jack claimed that Tucker had a company that could compete with theirs in the future. Billy inquired about Chancellor's involvement. Tucker would go for Jobot first, then Chancellor, according to Jill. She expressed concern about how she would repel him. Glissade, according to Jack, must be rendered useless. Jill remarked that they needed a large stick, but Jill Billy claimed that they already When Billy had. said that Tucker was already involved in a cover-up with one of his artists, as well as unlawful activity with young girls. Adam discovered the information while hunting for dirt on Tucker, according to Jack. Billy suggested they take it to the French board of directors, who would send Tucker up the Seine without a paddle. Jill expressed her admiration for Billy. She agreed that knowing the truth would set them free. Jack informed Jill that they needed to go through Ashley first, because she owned half of the company. Diane advised everyone that they needed to keep Tucker occupied. Jill cheerfully suggested that she would handle it. She stated she had an idea and purred with glee at how much fun it would be. Jill laid out her strategy for them and asked if it was enough of a diversion. Jack asked Jill if she could persuade Tucker that she was serious and spoke from the heart. Billy wasn't so sure because Jill wasn't very good at hiding her emotions. Jill claimed she couldn't manage her emotions while Billy was present, but Jill Tucker and Billy that Jack appeared to be upset. He requested Jill to shed light on the attempt to steal Billy from Jabot. Billy inquired as to if Jill did not want him to be happy. Jill stated that she would want Billy to be happy in her sphere, but Billy stated that if they took Tucker down appropriately, he wouldn't need to be Jill's sidekick. Jill stated that she wanted Billy to work with her because he was her son and she wanted to create something beautiful, meaningful and long-lasting with the person into whom she had poured her heart and soul. She inquired as to whether Jack desired his family to be in business together. Jack said more than she realised. Tucker appeared to Mamie in the athletic club dining room to be a man bent on vengeance. Tucker remarked that the prospect of vengeance no longer appealed to him. He stated that what he had in mind was vastly different from what she others anticipated Mamie of him. and Tucker together at the club's entrance and went to their table. Tucker told her it was time for him to be more productive and to focus his attention on doing good in the world. Ashley stated that she would believe it once she saw it. Ashley inquired whether Mamie thought Tucker wished to be a contributing member of society. Mamie didn't, but she said they'd have to wait and see whether he did shift his efforts. She stated that her family meant the world to her and that she would fight to the death to protect them. Tucker was informed that if he wasn't telling the truth, he needed to start praying. Mamie walked away. Ashley inquired if Tucker would be prepared to share his productivity strategy. Tucker consented since she was personally involved. Ashley inquired as to what role she might have in his future. Tucker stated that she had advised him to pursue Glissade. He stated that he was developing a feeling of purpose. He indicated that Glissade was the starting point for his goals. Ashley inquired about selling her stake of the company to him. 
Tucker stated that his lawyers were working on a proposal that Ashley, Ashley would find fairly generous. As to what Tucker intended for her to do with all of his generosity, he stated that there were no ties connected and that it was a clean break. Ashley, suspicious, inquired as to what he was up. Tucker snarled and demanded to know why she couldn't believe he was attempting to mend his habits. She stated that she couldn't. Ashley told Tucker that there were a few things she regretted during their time together, but obtaining Glissard was not one of them. She stated that it has a lot of promise with the correct leadership. Tucker inquired whether she was breaking her promise to sell him the company or simply trying to raise the price. Ashley suggested that she had changed her mind. Tucker stated she was only interested because he was. She assured him that she was not that petty. She claimed that if Glissade wasn't linked to a huge firm like Jabot, it would fail, and that it required her to thrive. Tucker stated he could create it from scratch. He claimed he could make it breathe, Tucker and that he had Ashley done it, before. that she couldn't wait to dump the company on him earlier in the week. She claimed she had changed her mind after seeing the enormous possibilities. Tucker snarled that she couldn't let him have even the tiniest piece of anything since she despised him so much. He indicated she could try something new at Jabot if she wanted to. She reiterated that she was not going to sell her share to Tucker for whatever reason. Tucker stated that he would have to go to war with her for it. Ashley grinned. Danny said he was scrolling for information on the fire engulfing Matty's campus when he arrived at Daniel's residence with bags of food. Danny informed me that the fire was 80 contained. Daniel stated that Lily was on her way there to see Matty. Daniel expressed his desire to spend quality time with Danny, but Danny stated that he was there to borrow Daniel's kitchen to prepare his spaghetti sauce. Danny, according to Daniel, only cooked it for exceptional occasions. He inquired as to why Danny was making it that night. Danny explained Daniel that it was for dinner that they Christine. have the talk. Daniel said that Danny and Christine's relationship had reached special source status, and he wondered how they'd gotten there. Danny said that they were friends who were getting closer. He described Christine as a great person who he despised seeing sad. Daniel inquired if it was simply pasta with a pal. Danny admitted that they had kissed. Daniel burst out laughing. Danny stated that things were progressing nicely. Christine walked inside Crimson Lights and Phyllis inquired as to what Cricket was up to. Christine expressed her want for some alone time. Christine needed to prepare her future, according to Phyllis, because the rumour mill said she was leaving the D. A's office. Christine was perplexed as to why Phyllis believed what Christine did was any of her business. She inquired as to why Phyllis, Phyllis was Christine interfering. that she had noticed Christine and Danny growing closer. Christine inquired as to why Phyllis was concerned. Phyllis stated that since Christine was a part of Danny's circle, she was also a part of Daniel's circle, and thus a part of Phyllis's life. Phyllis said she didn't like it, but she was attempting to accept it. Christine questioned Phyllis's assumption that Christine was becoming more active in Danny's life. Phyllis claimed it was only a gut feeling. She inquired once more if Christine and Danny were growing closer. Christine stated that she would not tell Phyllis. Phyllis remarked that it was pointless to pine for Paul and that it was preferable to pull off that bandage. She praised Christine's Christine ability to move that on. Phyllis had no business knowing about her relationship with Danny. It was a relationship, according to Phyllis. Christine inquired as to why Phyllis was so interested in Christine and Danny. Phyllis was accused of being envious. Phyllis described herself and Danny as friends and co-parents. Christine informed Phyllis that her relationship with Paul was gone and that her relationship with Danny was worthy of her time and attention. Nevertheless, she was unsure whether they would become more than friends. She stated that she will have more clarity after their dinner. Phyllis suggested pizza and drinks, but Christine said Danny was preparing an outstanding home-cooked meal. Danny, according to Phyllis, would cook his sauce. Phyllis alone. walked away. Phyllis texted Summer from the jazz lounge. Would you like to meet me for a drink? Sorry, can't tonight, Summer said. I'm burning the midnight oil. Rain check. Join me for a drink. Phyllis wrote to Daniel. I'm going to buy. Michael approached Phyllis and asked if he might buy her a drink. He inquired as to what he had done wrong. He was accused of abandoning Phyllis. 
he allegedly ghosted her after she awoke from the dead. Michael informed Phyllis he'd returned with Gloria, thinking all of Gloria's difficulties were behind her, only to discover they were tucked away in her carry-on. He claimed that he had to drag himself to the other side of the world to clean things up. Phyllis claimed that when he wasn't around, things were difficult, because he was the only one who understood that she was relieved Michael had returned. He requested that Phyllis inform him of what was going on. Phyllis stated she'd been trying to be decent, but she wasn't sure how much longer she could take because everyone still looked her as a paria and nothing would change. She claimed her children despised her and avoided her whenever they saw her strolling along the street. Michael said that just because she avoided prison didn't mean she wouldn't have to pay for what she'd done. She said that her friends and neighbours ostracised and shamed her. Michael recalled Phyllis giving up and wondering what the point was, and she would have done her best to live up to their low expectations of her. He stated that he could tell she wanted to be better. He made fun of his best friend's maturation. They both laughed. Phyllis claimed she didn't understand karma, but she assumed her current condition was her karma, Phyllis and she despised karma. how Diane and Christine were able to move on. She claimed to be in pain, but they had been forgiven. They were happy and in love. She inquired as to why she couldn't have those items as well. Why couldn't she have someone who loved, supported, trusted and believed in her? She insisted she deserved it. Michael informed Phyllis that feeling sorry for herself or disliking other people's pleasure would not lead to ultimate enlightenment. He stated that she could not compare her journey to that of others. Everyone, he remarked, had their own lessons to learn. He advised her to keep her eyes forward, to do good and to pour more love into the lives of others. And Phyllis expressed her want to believe that. He was not in prison. Her obligations were paid. She had children. Phyllis interjected to add that the kids despised her. Michael agreed that they were wary, but they had been through a lot. He told her she had a second opportunity and that she needed to take use of it. Phyllis stated that she would work on improving her life and forging her own path. When Christine walked into Daniel's apartment, she said, I can't believe a smell can bring back such good memories. She assumed Danny cooked that way for Daniel all the time. Daniel said, never, but wished Christine and Danny a pleasant evening. He asked them to keep some leftovers for him and then left. Danny emerged into the kitchen, shocked Christine to see Christine and Danny there. after dinner that it was the greatest dinner she'd eaten in years. They talked about how he combined the best components to create something magical and exceptional. Christine stated that the changes in the minor things and the passage of time provided depth. It was still the same, but better. Danny played some music and invited Christine to dance. They exchanged kisses while dancing, back at the Abbots. Billy said that he wanted to go because he needed to learn everything he could about Ashley and Tucker's company. Jack instructed him not to take any action against the corporation unless Ashley approved it. Billy wondered if Ashley had her own strategy. Ashley came in and stated that she was always up to something. She inquired if they wanted to talk about Glissade.